What's up guys, just wanted to do a quick video on how to set up Pattern Building properly so that you can use it and get all the proper calculations that you need, especially with the new mechanics like Impale if you've just come back at 3.10. So I'll just jump straight into it. What you got to do is search Pattern Building. Uh, this is for new and advanced players, especially if you haven't been using Pattern Building because I highly recommend it. And you can see here, if you search it, the top result is releases for, on GitHub and it's got open RL, so that's the link you want. And you can see here there's a zip file. You get the zip file, the exe will install it into your system like and spread the files out across your system. The zip file just puts it all in one folder, which is much easier to manage. And download that. It'll go to your downloads folder if you're on Windows 10. Unzip it and it'll go into a folder like this. So that's all the game, all the path to building files right there. And then to get the impale calculations, because if you open it up as it is, you'll have no impale, it'll just have like a total DPS calculation missing some of the mechanics. You want to search Path of Building Community, also known as Local Identities Path of Building, but they changed it to Community. And it's the top link. And if you scroll down here, you can see formerly known as Local Identity Fork. So this is just a fork of, of Path of Building. So this one adds a bunch of stuff, support for Impale, Pantheon, etc. Stuff that's missing that you might, that you'd want for a better calculation. And then you can, don't click this releases because we just downloaded Path to Building, the latest version. This is just to go to that same page. Then click here to go up installation instructions. And what their installation instructions actually are is it changes the update path for Path to Building to, to download from this fork. So you only have to change this. You don't have to download anything yourself. You just have to edit a file and add this in. So as you can see, they've got a description here, layout of how your manifest file should look. But all you really need to know is this link that you need to change, which is actually really similar. See how it's got raw GitHub user content open URL, and then they want you to change it to raw GitHub user content path to building community. So it's actually the same link with just this option here change where it's got open URL. They've changed that to path to building community. So it doesn't really matter the layout thing. Like maybe this can help for older versions, but it's, it makes it look a little bit more confusing. This is all you need to know. And where it says program. So you want to edit the line that says program. So if I go into my path to building folder, you'll find manifest.xml, right click, open with, choose app, find more apps, you know, find your notepad and then click OK. Make sure path of building is closed when you do it. And preferably open it up so the lines get a bit smoother. Like if, you, if your screen's small or your window's really small, it's going to make it all congested like this. It's hard to read. Spread out your window so that you have some better format. And just look for the line that says program at the end, or it might say program at the beginning. But basically, it's, it's the line that involves the program within the two brackets. So within those brackets, it'll have source URL, program, something, and then the, the address. So this is where it updates, uh, self-updates through itself. So I've already changed mine, but what it did look like is open URL. It was just like that. So see how this program here? That's all you need to change is you want to change this to path of building community, as it tells you on the website. So they want you to change it to say path of building community. And that's all you need to change. So just to make sure that I've spelled it right, path to building community like that. And then save it. And when you open up your path of building, you won't have all the calculations straight away. It'll check its version and check the files you've got. See how it's got checking here? If you don't have the path to building community fork files, like as you can see, mine is already installed, it will automatically start downloading a number of files to get your version changed over to the community fork. So just let it download and it'll just automatically, then all the calculations will be accurate. So then when you go in to look at your build, you'll have total DPS, impale DPS, bleed DPS, total D DPS, including impale and combined DPS. So you, you get a better calculation. So that's, that's the main chunk of the guide that I wanted to show everyone how to swap over to the community fork. But as well, I'm gonna show you how to, how to get a build. So just pretend you're a new player, you're coming back just like I was about five days ago and I had to, I had to reteach myself everything. Search 3.10 builds and somehow 3.10 is associated with Path of Exile already. 
and it'll come up stuff like this. You want to find a link that gives you the path of building paste bins because otherwise you'll get like click baited into visiting certain websites and becoming a member just to get a build. You can just go to a video like this and I'll show you how to navigate and hunt for what you want. So example, you're looking for a build like I've never clicked these links before. These are forum links obviously. When I click it, if the if the person that's done the build wants users to be able to copy it easily, they will include a simple link to a paste bin. Okay, see this here? It's like right there on this front of the build. Some uh, videos, like it just depends on the format of how they format their, their builds in the forum. So you can see here, he's just put it straight up. So that's so nice. Like it's so useful for anyone that wants to look at this build and see how it works. Like clearly you'd read his guide, but then if you just want to look at the passives and the items that he's got, you would right click this. Don't click the link and visit it because that'll just give you some confusing, like you get this thing. You don't need that. You only need, you only need to copy the actual link itself. So copy that, open your path of building. So you'll, you'll have a page like this, it'll be empty. And click new at the top. It, op it creates a new build, a blank one. And you want to go to import export at the top left. Click import from paste bin. Copy that link that you found for that build. And go to import. And then click import down here because it, it checks the code first. So code is valid. It's a legit build. Import. So now I've got the build and I can see the passives. I can see where he's branched off everything. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. And you can also see, depending on what the main skill is, it actually depends sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it won't be on the right one straight away because that DPS is looking mighty low. But you'd have to read the build of the mechanics because there's clearly there's a mechanic here that I'm missing. I don't know how this build works, to be honest. 41k like I'm trying to find what its actual DPS is and maybe it's not that good for casters or something or he just hasn't included end game gear no he has I just had to look at the build a bit more and, and actually read on on how it does damage because then sometimes the calculator won't be that useful without the right skill selected but just for the sake of it, let's take a look at another build because I know these will come up a bit easier. So this is a popular one, uh, Cyclone Champion build. And sometimes you have to hunt for the pace bin. So if it's, but still, like, see how much effort and detail has gone into this guide. It would not make sense for him not to include a pace bin because no, no one's going to, like, just memorize his entire build just by looking at these. Uh, looking at these. You can't just look at the showcase and and the description and, and get to build that easily so it just wouldn't make sense so if you look down here he's actually got new players guide path to building so that took me a few clicks to find it but on a good build it'll have there'll be a paste bin link somewhere you just got to hunt for it just be careful for google links because sometimes they will trick you and you're actually just going to go to another video and it's it's clickbait and it's lame and there's, there's people that spend way more time and effort making a good build that share it completely free. And if if it's like a YouTube video with a Google link instead of a paste bin link, don't click it because you're just going to get click baited. So once I've got that, I can, I can just, I'm not going to save this one. So I'll just import here, put from paste bin. I want to see the cyclone, cyclone slayer. So import. So now this is Slayer build, and we've got some endgame six link cyclone. Got some calculations here. Oh, he hasn't done the gems, so that's going to be missing a ton of a ton of damage. This is just the base build. Looks like it. Yeah, the flash and the socket gems are missing. But either way, you can see here how it's come up. You can see the tree. You've got your bandit. And this is also for customizing your own. If you do a fresh one and it's all blank, this is how you can fill it in. You can check your pantheons, your skills. The, the area to put skills in is here on the next tab. So this is how you navigate through path to building to see what you're doing. I'm going to load up a more a stronger build. But after you've loaded a build that you like, 
make sure you click save and name it up here. So you you know put in your name and then save it, and that way it'll come up on the main screen with names like this. So just for an example, this is the Cyclone Champion proper one that I found online. You can see here the damage calculators. That's because all the gems and everything have been put in. Uh, the other build was just missing some of the mechanics. So this is a fully this is an end game build basically. It's not a leveling build. So as you can see here, it's all set up. But the way that you would do it, if you're doing a blank one, is you would just click New. It'll add an empty one down here, and you can name them based on how you like. For example, see how these are named by the skills. You can also just name it four link auras or four link buffs or four link helmet, whatever. Uh, you could just name it helmet if you know exactly. Like if you have special sp particular passives that have to be in a, a specific uh, piece of armor. But otherwise, just as an example, four link auras, if you just enter that. You can set where it is, but that won't affect the name. Look, so if for link or you want it in the helmet, or you've got it in the helmet in your in your test build, whatever, you can set it like that if you want, and then just start putting your gems in and doing the quality. So you see how I did that, and as you add more, obviously if there's some kind of connection, like if they can support each other. As an example, Leap Slam can be supported. If I put Leap Slam in here in Blood Magic, you can see that they, they highlighted. Whoops. Let's get rid of those. So you can remove gems. Blood Magic. So when, when Blood Magic's in there, click off it. If I highlight Leap Slam, Blood Magic will turn green. It means it's supporting it. And same if I highlight Blood Magic, it's affecting Leap Slam. That's why they're changing colors. And then if I put something different in, like, let's see here, Ancestral Protector, it's also supported by Blood Magic, but it's not supporting Leap Slam. So Blood Magic will this, this the gems will highlight what they can support and what what's not being supported. So Leap Slam, what they're synergizing with. So Ancestral Protector can also be cast with Blood Magic, but it's not affecting Leap Slam at all. And adjusting these will also, depending on what skill you've got selected. So if I go back to my cyclone, the cyclone up here in body armor, if I start taking levels away, you can see that the calculation is changing dynamically with it. And yeah, so you can you can see how the, the gem skills were set up. This is separate to your actual items. Okay, so th these are two separate tabs, skills and items. So you can settle your gems and your auras up, and you can also just use the delete on your keyboard to get rid of the entry, like that. So now it's gone. So here you can set all your gems up and then go to items, and this is where you can edit your items. Let's just pretend that it's, I'll just go back, just pretend it's new, you're working from scratch. The way that you put your items in is this section here is what is in your build, and this is search. These are search options. So if you wanted to find, for example, a weapon that has the best, see how I can sort by crit chance? You can sort by specific things. So the best impaled total DPS. And then I want it to be a new weapon, Delirium League. Uh, you don't have to set the type at one-handed melee. If you want it to be close combat, and nothing came up for delirium. Lots come up that way. So, and if I go any slot, it'll come up with, it's like for example, this one will will find something. I'm pretty sure. Take away the one hand melee, and you can see here, total D, by total DPS any slot, it come up with it came up with a few different. Items, boots, what's this? Gloves, and mostly jewels actually. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can search for all, all different stuff here, mostly through the uniques though, what's already already in the game. And also down here with the rares. So and if if you want to just type it in, if you know the name, just type it. So I I want flasks. This is all gonna show up all the flasks. You can Specifically, select flask in search. 
if you want instead of typing it and then when you want it in your build you just double left click it'll come up here and if there's modifiers you can you can change them so if it's a jewel or something you can actually change the the modifier for it and see how there's a slider here that's for the RNG of the roll so I can max it out if I want a perfect roll and that 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 goes for jewels and it'll change it, it might be like below it if it's a jewel cluster but there'll be a slider that you can change the amount of passives and things like that and then click add to build it'll pop up here and it's automatically put in a flash slot because I I had it empty and then let's just pretend you want a specific cluster jewel with certain passives just click craft item it's gonna be a rare we can call it whatever you can name it a specific name if you can come up with something uh, I can't so I'm just gonna put large cluster and then you just search cluster so jewel clusters come up and I want a large cluster jewel so create and now I've got the amount of passives that I can adjust like I said I want it to be a specific you know the type of jewel it is so a jewel wielding jewel <laughs> and you can search the passive skills that it's going to add so I might want deep cuts chance to impale insatiable killer combat rhythm what's combat rhythm do that's pretty nice and then you can go your suffixes as well where you can add more jewel sockets so two added jewel sockets is an actual thing by itself you don't have to add individual ones and then martial prowess oh that's OP anyway so set your modifiers I can't I'm not sure if you can craft on jewels yet because there's also crafting you can add crafting to it just ignore that press escape and then once you've set it up click add to build it'll come up as a cluster but you can't necessarily use it yet because you need to make sure that you've got room in your tree and it, there has to be a cluster active so the jewel cluster is on the edge of the map so I'll just activate that one okay and then if I go back to items you can see here it's come up with a socket I can put in that large cluster jewel that I just created and so this goes the same if you're editing a build that you want to customize for yourself it works the same way there'll just already be a bunch of items all filling up here and then you've got your calculations that have got your you know your life your your armor it's a little bit broken up so you have to look at different spots but just make sure whenever you're looking at your damage that you're looking on the left over here it's a lot easier to read but it, it should show it here too so skill damage and then this is total including impale okay so yeah that's how you do it and save it as whatever name and you can see here at the top where you select your type which is basically self-explanatory and your levels and you can also set stages if it depending on your on the build if it's got a max stage you can do that like for example max stage cyclone improves the AOE radius so 14 it's actually 23 for a longer spin and you can set your pantheon and your your thing there I think I already already showed that so anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching and I hope that helps you figure out how to use path building and yeah, enjoy playing. See you.